one of the most important functions of the human immune system is eliminating cancerous cells before they have the chance of multiplying out of control. Cancer cells are genetically unstable and mutate and evolve over time, making themselves invisible to immune cells or outright using them to make the body tolerate the tumor. The field of cancer immunotherapy studies the ways in which cancer takes the immune system hostage in hopes of circumventing them in novel therapies. Our story starts with T cells, specialized immune cells. They are characterized by their receptor called TCR or T cell receptor. TCR allows T cells to bind to antigens. What is remarkable here is that each and every T cell that leaves the production line in the thymus has its own unique one of a kind TCR. And since your body contains many T cells, there exists a T-cell for any conceivable antigen that might make an appearance in your body. This breathtaking variety emerges during T-cell development in the thymus, a small gland in your upper chest that gets smaller the older you are. For the process of somatic recombination, immature T-cells shuffle around fragments of DNA in the region responsible for encoding the shape of their TCR. Essentially, each T cell's TCR can be imagined as the product of a deck of randomly shuffled cards, whose exact order in this deck dictates what antigens can bind to the TCR. Even though the decks of all T cells contain the same cards, they are unlikely to be shuffled in the same order, and hence unlikely to bind the same antigens. But the array of possible antigens these TCRs can bind includes self-antigens. On the molecular level, there is no difference between viral antigens, such as the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, bacterial antigens, and antigens found in your body naturally, called self-antigens. Since there exists no intrinsic difference, there must be some way to eliminate T-cells whose TCRs can bind to self-antigens and cause autoimmune disease. To facilitate this filtering process, Immature T-cells are subjected to a wide array of self-antigens. If a T-cell's TCR allows it to bind strongly to any of them, it is eliminated. Things get complicated when a T-cell binds a self-antigen only weakly, however. Indeed, T-cells that bind the self-antigen weakly or cross-bind it make it through the ordeal. Just because their binding is imperfect, does not mean that they cannot cause severe autoimmune disease. So, evolution has provided us with another layer of defense from autoimmune disease, immune checkpoints. Immune checkpoints are specialized receptors found on several types of cells that regulate immune cell activation. There are several receptors in this class, but I chose to focus on two in this video. CTLA4, which stands for cytotoxic T lymphocyte associated protein 4, and PD1, which stands for anti programmed cell death protein 1. Unfortunately, these built in regulatory mechanisms can be exploited by cancer cells, holding the immune system hostage and promoting tolerance of the tumor in the body. Cancerous cells can be seen and attacked by the immune system because their genetically unstable, dynamic nature gradually alienates them from normal body cells. In particular, these cells amass DNA mutations. When these mutations happen in protein encoding genes, they can cause the cell to display weird, corrupted proteins, which are a sure sign of trouble. These malformed proteins are known as tumor-specific antigens, or TSAs, since they are always indicative of worrying mutations happening within the cell in question. TSAs are also referred to as neoantigens. But not all mutations go noticed, since not all genes serve as blueprints for proteins. Part of DNA serves a regulatory function and influences how much of a protein the cell produces. Mutations in this part of DNA do not show up as malformed proteins, but rather as an abnormally low or high concentration of a normal protein. These proteins that are not themselves indicative of mutations 
but whose concentration may be indicative thereof, are called tumor-associated antigens, or TAAs. Obviously, cancer cells would much prefer to be left alone by the immune system to do their own thing and multiply out of control. And, given the aforementioned genetic instability of these corrupted cells, there is potential on which evolution can act. PD-1 is the first lever cancer can pull to directly avoid destruction. As worried effector T cells infiltrate the tumor and probe the cancer cells with their TCRs, their PD-1 receptors are activated by cancer cells at the same time. Immune cell activation is best understood not as a binary switch, on or off, but as a spectrum of activation strength. PD-1 affects activation negatively. It makes the T effector cells wear out sooner, reproduce less vigorously, and send fewer chemical messages, making them much worse at dispatching those troublemaking cells. In effect, Cancer cells can turn powerful effector T cells that are capable of punching holes into them into harmless observers. But CTLA4 may be the real ace up the sleeve of cancer cells. This receptor is found on different types of T cells. When interacting with an antigen-presenting cell, or APC, which, as the name suggests, presents suspicious antigens to T cells, CTLA4 weakens the activation much like PD-1. Worse still, CTLA-4 is also found on T-Rex, regulatory T-cells that maintain tolerance and serves to promote tolerance of the tumor among immune cells. With the discovery of these molecular pathways, researchers have come up with artificial antibodies that bind to these immune checkpoints, preventing their activation and exploitation by cancer cells. This new type of therapy is especially promising when it comes to melanoma, a type of cancer notoriously difficult to treat with radio or chemotherapy. Alas, this therapy also brings its own risks with it. As mentioned, PD-1 and CTLA-4 are both important regulators of tolerance to self-antigens, and blocking them with drugs can lead to autoimmune disease. I believe that the case of immune checkpoint inhibitors is a marvelous example of uncovering the molecular mechanisms of a disease and acting to disrupt them with cutting-edge technology. And while these drugs do not represent a single bullet against cancer, they are definitely a leap in the right direction. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you are interested in content like this, it would be highly appreciated if you left a like or subscribe to my channel. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.